All right, so this week we will get into the uh, topic of color. The monochromatic scheme uses different tones from the same angle on the color wheel, as you can see on the left right here. And the advantage of this system is a high level of unity because you're using the same colors and they are unified through the color, as you can see on the example on the right here. However, it might get a little boring because of lack of variety. So you gotta be, you gotta watch out for that. So Mark Tenzi's uh, masterful, masterful discarding the frame is almost entirely composed of variation of blue. So with this, the mysterious activity is depicted, combined with the uh, monochromatic, monochromatic color, raises questions rather uh, than provides an answer. So next one, adjacent colors on the uh, color color wheels are used in analogous color scheme, as you can see on uh, this this guy right here. As with monochromatic harmony, a high degree of unity is ensured, but the wider range of hues offer greater variety and increased interest, as you can see example on the right. So even though they are unified by this uh, color, they still provide some level of variety just to make it more interesting. So the palette dramatically expands in a complementary color scheme. So complementary colors are oppo opposite on the uh, traditional color wheel. So when mixed together, they can lower intensity and produce a wide range of browns. So when paired with a composition, complementary colors can become powerful partners and each color increase the impact of the other. So let's take a look at this example by Francis Bacon. So his uh, work, uh, work called uh, Four Studies for a Self-Portrait is a good example of this color scheme. So it is dominated by the uh, complement red and green, as you can see. And the design is unified by browns, which is what you get when you mix those two colors. So vigorous slashes of uh, pure green and red add visual energy and create this uh, illusion of movement. And Bacon's main style and focus was depicting human figure in disoriented and distorted way, which he used this color scheme to emphasize it. And also, each color uh, complement, com I mean, each complementary pair has its own distinctive strength. Violet, purple, and yellow provides the uh, widest uh, value range, meaning that purple is dark and uh, yellow is bright. And orange and blue provides the widest range of variation in temperature, so orange is warm and blue is cold. And red and green are closest in value and create extreme agitation when played side by side. Except for during holiday seasons, of course. So by mixing two complements plus black and white, we can create a range of color that uh, begins to suggest the power of a uh, full spectrum. So another example of using the, uh, the color scheme of complementary. So there is another type of uh, comp complementary uh, color scheme. It's called split complementary. So an even wide, wider range of possibilities is offered by the, this color scheme. Rather than pair uh, colors that are in opposite position on the color wheel, the artist uh, completes the scheme using the two colors on the either side of one of the uh, compliments. So as you can see on the right, Giorgio O'Keeffe's Jack in the uh, Pulpit number five is dominated by rich greens and violets with accents of yellow at the top of the uh, composition and a vertical line of red just to the left of the center. So this is a great example of this using this color scheme. So next color scheme is the uh, triadic color scheme, probably one of the hardest to use. I've actually never uh, be, was able to fully harness this color scheme. However, it pushes the uh, choices even further apart so that they are now in a triangular position, equally spaced around the wheel. So artists and designers often use this color scheme when variety and strong impact are in needed. So in the brochure you see on the right, for UCLA Extension Open House, variation on yellow, green, red, orange, and blue violet brings energy to the de design, while the white area provides openness. So these are color harmonies, but what about disharmony? 
So selecting the right colors can make the difference between a vi visual disaster and a visual delight. As a result, color harmony is the subject of endless book offering advice to artists, architects, and surface pattern designers, and so on. So as noted previ previously, monochromatic, analogous, complementary, split complementary, and triadic systems are traditional forms of color harmony. But at each year, uh, designers uh, invent their own harmonies. So that is something that you can also try as well. When this harmony is skillfully used, it can be as effective as color harmony. Artists and designers often use this harmony when the subject matter is disturbing or when they require an unusual visual approach. In the example on the left, uh, Francis Bacon again used uh, tans, gray, and pink, yellow, orange, and the black in the center to produce a painting that is as disturbing as it is almost beautiful, right? So the colors in the body suggest some kind of a disease while the areas of black, yellow, and gray uh, creates this room that is agitated and disorienting. Using similar pinks, gray, black, and yellow, orange, Steve Quinn created a gentle evoc evocation of memory in his Christmas poster. Here the words are uh, words and images shift back and forth in space as fluid as a dream. Let's take a look at this example. So bright yellow and hot pink works uh, work together to make this poster truly eye catching, right? So designed to call attention to a disparity in the number of exhibitions granted to male and female artists, this poster had to stand out and compete with other information displayed on walls around New York City. So a witty image combined with jarring colors was just right in this case. So as this example demonstrate, the degree and harmony that the artist uses must depend on the ideas behind the image and on the visual context in which an image will appear. So alright, that is the uh, crash course on color harmony and disharmony so if you're interested in this topic you can do your own research and then dig a little bit deeper believe me there's like a 500 uh, page dissertation on this color uh, color theory but uh, but for for our class we're just gonna do this crash course and then start using this so that we can you know feel uh, how so that we can learn about how to use it rather than the theory and then all that you know a knowledge behind it. So, so for this week's assignment, you will apply this color harmony to your first project and create four variations. So choose three harmonies and apply them to your project. So just like how it is in the uh, examples. And as for the fourth one, experiment with uh, this harmony on the fourth one. You don't have to get it right just to just uh, experiment with different color schemes and uh, colors and things like that. So great place that you can start with is uh, it's called Adobe Cooler. It used to be called Cooler. Oh, now it's color. So let's go to the uh, color.adobe.com and here it gives you all the options that you can play around with. So, so if you, so on the if you select one of these, if you select the analogous on the left here, and if you move it around, ooh, you can make it wider like this, or now this is not uh, analogous anymore, but let's look. So if you, you see this guy, if you move around the center one, it's going to adjust the other circles, the color palettes, according to that uh, center uh, reference color so you can experiment it with different color schemes and then you can copy this code and then apply it to the uh, Adobe Illustrator let me show that real quick probably already know how to do that right okay so you can come to this and then just copy this value right here control C or command C then double click right here and then you can paste it in here and get the color so voila and also i i know that there is a color section 
color palette, uh, palette section, color guide. Here you can also play around with. So here you can play around uh, different color palettes. So here there's a complementary. So if I select complementary and then change the color to something else, it's going to change according to the reference color, which is going to be this color. And then it changes to the uh, selected color contemporary uh, reference color. But I prefer Adobe Cooler, I mean color, if they change the name, because this is just better to, you know, see with the bigger color example. So I like using this whenever I'm starting a new de design. So there's a monochromatic, triad, and complementary, and things like that. So just play around with it. And for the disharmony, you can use the custom and then start, you know, doing crazy things that you want to do. So, say... I want to make this kind of a disharmony. That is it for this week. I'll see you guys on the next video.